People who give over their minds to fear, any sort of fear, neglect to use their minds and begin to drift. Eventually they drift into the whirlpool of hypnotic rhythm, from which they may never escape. Rhythm, from which they may never escape. Rhythm, from which they may never escape. Welcome back to River Queen Conjure, Oshun Ajay Exclusive, and No Narc Network TV. I am the Oracle slash Badass Witch, Oshun Ajay. We are on Lesson 13 of Dissecting the Devil, you guys. Let's get it. Then you do not mind what religious leaders think or say of you when they speak of death? <sighs> not as long as they say something. If the churches should stop talking about me, my cause would receive a severe setback. Every attack made against me fixes the fear of me in the minds of all who are influenced by it. You see, opposition is the thing that keeps some people from drifting, providing they do not yield to it. Since you claim the Church's help instead of hindering your cause, tell me what would give you cause to worry. My only worry is that someday a real thinker may appear on Earth. What would happen if a thinker did appear? You ask me what would happen? I'll tell you what would happen. People would learn the greatest of all truths, that the time they spend in fearing something would, if reversed, give them all they want in the material world and save them from me after death. Isn't that worth thinking about, thinking about, thinking about? What is keeping such a thinker from appearing in the world? Fear of criticism. Fear of criticism. Fear of criticism. Many are called, my people, but few choose to step up to the mic and actually speak what is on their hearts, what is on their minds, um, their beliefs that are unconventional, um, but that make all the sense in the world um, to those who, you know, have ears to hear and eyes to see. So, you know, it takes um, courage and it takes a person who has overcome um, the fear of, you know, at giving a damn about what other people think about them and their path and their choices and decisions, okay? So, um, you know, again, if you guys haven't seen my um, When I Defeated the Devil video, um, I believe that, you know, me going toe-to-toe uh, -to -toe with this energy, um, you know, uh, we call the devil um, at a young, very young age and, um, you know, being wise enough to listen to my spirit period. Um, regarding that to go ahead and walk forward and confront this devil face to face eye to eye um, he wasn't even there for it okay by the time I was within arm's reach of him he had already turned into a clown and and then he disappeared okay this is the reality of what happens to that energy uh, when you face it okay and so um, it just takes you for you to have courage and so if you are um, do have whatever your fears are um that is that devilish energy um being represented okay represented and so uh, anything that it represents a fear or a limitation in your life represents um the devil okay and it is uh it is essential that you overcome that fear or that limitation in order to be um and consider yourself chosen it may interest you to know that the fear of criticism is the only effective weapon I have with which to whip you. If you were not afraid to publish this confession after you wring it from me, I would lose my earthly kingdom. And if I did surprise you and publish it, how long would it be until you lost your kingdom? Just long enough for one generation of children to grow into understanding. So this book was written in 1938, about a generation ago. And um, as we speak, we are currently in the midst of a mass spiritual awakening. You cannot take the adults from me. I have them too securely sewed up. But if you published this confession, it would be sufficient to keep me from gaining control of the yet unborn and those who have not yet reached the age of reason. You wouldn't dare publish what I have told you about the religious leaders. They would crucify you. I thought the savage practice of crucifixion went out of style 2,000 years ago. I don't mean crucifixion on a cross. I mean social and financial crucifixion. Your income would be shut off. You would become a social outcast. Religious leaders and their followers alike would treat you with scorn. 
Suppose I should choose to throw in my lot with the select few who make a pretense of using their own minds rather than fear the masses who do not, the masses of whom you claim 98%. If you have courage enough to do this, you will crimp my style. Why do you lay claim to no scientist? Don't you like scientists? Oh, yes. I like all people well enough, but true scientists are out of my reach. Why? Because they think for themselves and spend their time studying natural laws. They deal with cause and effect. They deal with facts wherever they find them. But do not make the mistake of believing scientists have no religion. They have a very definite religion. What is their religion? The religion of truth. The religion of natural law. If the world ever produces an accurate thinker with ability to fathom the deeply buried secret of life and death, you can be sure that science will be responsible for the catastrophe. Catastrophe to whom? To me, of course. Let's get back to the subject of hypnotic rhythm. I want to know more about it. Is it something like the principle through which people can hypnotize one another? It is precisely the same thing. I have already told you so. Why do you repeat your questions? Uh, that is an old worldly custom of mine, Your Majesty. For your enlightenment, I will tell you, I am forcing you to repeat many of your statements for the sake of emphasis, the emphasis, the emphasis. I'm also trying to see if I can catch you in a lie. Don't dodge the issue. Get back to hypnotic rhythm and tell me all you know about it. Am I a victim of it? Not now, but you barely missed falling into my web. You drifted toward the whirlpool of hypnotic rhythm until you discovered how to force me into making this confession. Then I lost control of you. How interesting. You are not trying to recapture me through flattery, are you? <sighs> that would be the best bribe I could offer you. It is the bribe I used on you effectively before you got the upper hand of me. With what did you flatter me? With many things. Chief among them sex and the desire for self-expression. What effect did your bribes have on me? They caused you to neglect your major purpose in life and started you to drifting. Was that all you did to me through your bribes? That was plenty. But I am back on the track and out of your reach now, am I not? Yes, you are temporarily out of my reach because you are not drifting. What broke your spell over me and released me from the habit of drifting? My answer may humiliate you. Do you want to hear it? Go ahead and give it to me, Your Majesty. I wish to learn how much truth I can stand. When you found a great love in the woman of your choice, I lost my grip on you. I lost my grip on you. I lost my grip on you. So you are going to accuse me of hiding behind a woman's skirts, are you? No, not hiding. I wouldn't put it that way. I would say you have learned how to give yourself a solid background with the embellishment of a woman's mind. The woman's skirt has nothing to do with it, then. No, but her brain does. When you and your wife began to combine your two brains through your habit of masterminding every day, masterminding every day, masterminding every day, every day, every day, you stumbled upon the secret power with which you forced me into this confession. So understanding that the devil feels that, you know, people coming together in a loving relationship, thinking together, brainstorming and doing things together um, is a big threat to him. Then you should understand why um, anytime a narcissist enters a relationship, the relationship itself is under attack and, um, and specifically the partner is under attack. So the communication will definitely be disrupted or impossible to even have um, due to the devil having their minds and making communication impossible, make it impossible for the host to even hear what the mate is saying. Um, he disrupts anything he can to keep that connection from being made, okay, um, to keep them from communicating, to keep them from truly having intimacy or bonding and understanding. And I want you guys to really, um, you know, take this I take a lesson from this portion of the book because he is literally telling you why your your relationship with your narcissist um, has been absolutely impossible to make work. Is that the truth or are you trying to flatter me again? I could flatter you if I had you alone, but I cannot flatter you while you have the use of your wife's mind. So this is why communication with the narcissist in your relationship is um, impossible because the devil cannot afford to have you to connect on a mental, spiritual, or emotional level. I'm beginning to catch on to something important. 
I'm beginning to understand what was meant by the writer of that passage in the Bible, which says substantially, When two or more meet together and ask for anything in my name, it shall be granted. It is true, then, that two minds are better than one. It is not only true. It is necessary before anyone can continuously contact the great storehouse of infinite intelligence, wherein is stored all that is, all that ever was, and all that can ever be. Hence the private no narc network where we will be beginning um, brainstorming exercises as a group and also no narc network TV where you should all subscribe. Is there such a storehouse? If there had not been, you would not, could not now be humiliating me with this silly forced confession. Isn't it dangerous to give this sort of information to the world? Sure, it is dangerous to me. If I were you, I would not give it out. Let us get back now to the technique through which you fasten on your victims the habit of drifting. What is the very first step a drifter must take to break the habit? A burning desire to break it. You, of course, know that no one can be hypnotized by another person without his willingness to be hypnotized. As well, no able-bodied adult can be abused by a narcissist without their willingness on some level to be abused after the first time. Neither can nature place one under the spell of hypnotic rhythm without his willingness to be hypnotized. The willingness may assume the form of indifference toward life generally, lack of ambition, fear, lack of definiteness of purpose, and many other forms. Nature does not need one's consent in order to place him under the spell of hypnotic rhythm. It needs only to find him off guard through any form of neglect to use his own mind. Remember this. Whatever you have, you use it or you lose it. You use it or you lose it. You use it or you lose it. All successful attempts to break the habit of drifting must be done before nature makes the habit permanent through hypnotic rhythm. As I understand you, hypnotic rhythm is a natural law through which nature fixes the vibration of all environments. Is that true? Yes. Nature uses hypnotic rhythm to make one's dominating thoughts and one's thought habits permanent. That is why poverty is a disease. Nature makes it so by fixing permanently the thought habits of all who accept poverty as an unavoidable circumstance. Through this same law of hypnotic rhythm, nature will also fix permanently positive thoughts of opulence and prosperity. So whenever you're ready to put in the work, simply replace your daily thoughts of the struggle with affirmations such as this one. I am, I am a magnet for prosperity, I am a magnet and opulence, and I am a magnet for prosperity, abundance, wealth, wealth, and opulence. and opulence. Perhaps you will better understand the working principle of hypnotic rhythm if I tell you its nature is to fix permanently all habits, whether they are mental or physical. If your mind fears poverty, your mind will attract poverty. Why do we attract what we fear? Because fear is a very strong emotion coupled with uh, visualization usually, and the mind does not discriminate. It creates whatever you hold in it, okay? Um, especially those things that are attached to the strongest emotion, which fear tends to be, which is why we should fear not, okay? If your mind demands opulence and expects it, your mind will attract the physical and financial equivalents of opulence. This is in accordance with an immutable law of nature. So it is an immutable law of nature that when you demand and expect that which you wish to receive from the universe, the universe cannot help but to yield that to you. Okay, again, using the same strong emotions, visualization, um, spoken word, and intent, um, you can um, create the world that you wish to live in using your own inherently gifted spiritual power, okay? Did the writer of that sentence in the Bible, whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap, have in mind this law of nature? He could have nothing else in mind. The statement is true. You can see evidence of its truth in all human relationships. And that is why the man who forms the habit of drifting through life must accept whatever life hands him. Is that correct? That is absolutely correct. Life pays the drifter its own price on its own terms. The non-drifter makes life pay on his own terms. Doesn't the question of morals enter into what one gets from life? To be sure, but only for the reason that one's morals have an influence on one's thoughts. 
No one can collect what he wants from life merely by being good, if that is what you want to know. No, I guess not. I see what you mean. We are all where we are and what we are because of our own deeds. No, not exactly. You are where you are and what you are because of your thoughts and your deeds. So the very first principle to master, you guys, uh, in magic, in life, and most importantly in dealing with the narcissist, is mentalism. Because, of course, all, all, all is mine. Is mine. And is mine. there is no such reality as luck, is there? Emphatically, no. Circumstances which people do not understand are classified under the heading of luck. Back of every reality is a cause. Often the cause is so far removed from the effect. Such as what happens in the mind of the narcissist who dissociates himself from the destructive effects of all of the things that have been caused by their negative thought and thereby destructive behaviors. That the circumstance can be explained only by attributing it to the operation of luck. Nature knows no such law as luck. It is a man-made hypothesis with which he explains away things he does not understand. The terms luck and miracle are twin sisters. Neither of them has any real existence except in the imaginations of people. Both are used to explain that which people do not understand. Remember this. Everything having a real existence is capable of proof. Keep this one truth in mind, and you will become a sounder thinker. Which is more important, one's thoughts or one's deeds? All deeds follow thoughts. There can be no deeds without their having first been patterned in thought. Moreover, all thoughts have a tendency to clothe themselves in their physical counterpart. One's dominating thoughts, that is, the thoughts one mixes with the emotions, desire, hope, faith, fear, hate, greed, enthusiasm, not only have a tendency to clothe themselves in their physical equivalent, but they are bound to do so. That reminds me to ask you to tell me more about yourself. Where, in addition to the minds of people, do you dwell and operate? I operate wherever there is something I can control and appropriate. So just like its father, the devil, the narc demon wishes to control you for the sheer purpose of usurping all of your positive qualities so that they may eventually replace and become you. Sound familiar? I have already told you I am the negative portion of the electron of matter. So in essence, he represents the small negative electron, which orbits the atomic nucleus where you'll find the God particle, the proton, the positive charge, and the neutral particle, which is green, representing us, um, which is neutral, okay, which means that we can go either way. Notice, though, that the green neutron representing humans um, is naturally closer in size and in color to the God particle particle, which is indicative of the natural likeness of the human to its creator. Also, to the fact that if you remain centered in your center, the negative charge representing the devil, representing the wolves, can only circle around you, okay? And they cannot touch you at your core, um, which was also represented in my dream where we were safe inside the house, but the house was surrounded by zombies, okay? I am the explosion in lightning. I am the pain in disease and physical suffering. I am the unseen general in warfare. I am the unknown commissioner of poverty and famine. I am the executioner extraordinary at death. I am the inspirer of lust after the flesh. I am the creator of jealousy and envy and greed. I am the instigator of fear. I am the genius who converts the achievements of men of science into instruments of death. Like the devil's co-workers who took Nikola Tesla's ideas and perverted them for evil. I am the destroyer of harmony in all manner of human relationship. I am the antithesis of justice. I am the driving force in all immorality. I am the stalemate of all good. I am anxiety, suspense, 
superstition, and insanity. I am the destroyer of hope and faith. I am the inspirer of destructive gossip and scandal. I am the discourager of free and independent thought. In brief, I am the creator of all forms of human misery. The instigator of discouragement and disappointment. And you do not call that cold and cruel? I call that definite and dependable. I call that definite and dependable. I call that definite and dependable. And we're going to end lesson 13 right here, you guys. If you would like to join the private No Narc Network, the links to Oshun Aje exclusive and Badass Witch exclusive are both in the description box. Um, subscribe to No Narc Network TV. And until we meet again, my people, keep it classy, keep it clean, and do what you got to do to make shit happen. Peace.